it's sort of a, when I heard that this reading is going to be done in a cyber cafe, I was extremely happy to think it. I touch things that I don't know how to do it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this has to do a little bit with the, with the people that uh, like computers and work with the computers. <clears throat> Crazy old man. I dedicate this poem for those who cannot speak. This is a story of old man's fiasco, who lived by the river called Atabasca. He was born and lived his life on a farm, did what he could, never caused any harm. His children was grown and a wife passed away. Like any farmer, he dreamed of retiring one day. A company swallowed his land with a single gulp, and they built a mill to produce pulp. Air began to smell like a toxic gas, and trees become paper to wipe a human's ass. He, he went down a stream, he deserved some peace. He'd work all his life and can do as he please. He bought an acreage on the edge of the park, where he could hear bison pinching grass in the dark. At the end of his life, he did not need attention. He grew, he grew himself garden and survived on a pension. He would always go and sit by the river, watch an eagle take fish near a dam built by the beaver. In ten or so years, things begin to change. The tar sands got expansion, and air would fill with stench. When he went to catch his evening dish, he began to see some deformed fish. In the forest he heard ravens' happy laughs as they fed on deformed and discarded calves. At first he thought that he was bitten by a tick, but a time passed and he still felt sick. The young doctor that looked like a some high school prancer gave him a diagnosis stage four cancer. He's prescribed him strongest line of defense, come to Edmonton for treatment for one week every month. That is when he met some young smart slacker, also dying from cancer, who claimed to be a hacker. Both knew the disease they have has won, and that is how their friendship began. Once the farmer asked that junior on a scooter, how would you break in the biggest computer? You can see that the stream almost blew its lid as ideas moved in ahead of that kid. As disease began to take his autonomy, kid told old man about astronomy and the biggest computer on a satellite dish, strong enough that through galaxy you can tell them you wish, about zeta reticular binary stars and a little green man that bring greetings from Mars. They made a promise, instead of last dish, last dish they would help each other fulfill their last wish. Once old, man, once old man came to the city, but the young man met his end, leaving him letter written by his dying hand. I fulfilled my half, now if you dare, make my dreams come true, truth is out there. The instruction for use were simple and brisk, all he had to do is insert the disc. When cancer had taken what old man had to give, and young generous doctor gave him two months to live, he approached the foundation and grants man last wish if he can visit the world's largest satellite dish. He secured the donation and in several days he was told in two weeks he could come and hear space. I guess his donation impressed the foundation. For NASA it was also good public relations. He left his will to the world vision. There was newspapers, photos and a big television. Then came the moment when he came to the place when the brightest minds on the planet eavesdrop on a space. The guy said, this is the largest project that the NASA did. The old man thought, will it last as long as pyramid? The guide continued, I read that you asked your last wish to see how we control and move this big dish. He proudly went on, it takes only one man and program on a disk, then machines gives you hand. The old man saw the controls, it looked very simple. Then he grabbed the guide and squeezed him like a pimple. Then he threw him out like a frozen third. A dying farmer was stronger than a healthy nerd. It wasn't that hard. On a marble floor, he turned there sideways and locked the door. He made young man promise as he shook his hand. And he inserted a disc where it says sand. With his skinny bald head like a green man from Mars, an old man pointed dish towards binary stars. And in all of the codes that the universe has seen, following words appeared on a computer screen. Is there any intelligent life out there? Can anyone hear me? Does anyone care? 
If you receive this message light years away, give me your time and hear what I say. If you ever decide to find us someday, we were one of the systems in a Milky Way. We were third satellite of the yellow star. We look blue from space if you're not that far. You will see our oceans, they're blue like a skies. Yellow suns of desert and a cap sealed in ice. But our planet is doomed. We became overrun by the species that came from some other sun. They fulfilled their needs, they must destroy and kill inhabitants in their bloodthirsty ploy. Many species on earth are already gone and many more on a brink not to see their next dawn. They cut out the forest that killed air for the planet and covered good land with a man-made granite. They're poisoning water and destroying land. Can you please come and give us a hand? They turn air that we breathe into poison gas. They waste so much food and there's none left for us. They move in machines, even though they have legs. They took away beaches where turtles lay eggs. They killed to control population, as the reason tells. What stopped this species from controlling themselves? So if you can hear me, come and give us a hand. We're not evolved to make a stand. If you're a being that can truly think, come and give us a hand, our lives on a brink. If every one of us knows, and they know themselves, that that missing link came from somewhere else. So if you're from the future, in this poison dirt, find some species, find the bones of the species, who coexisted on earth. If you ever decide to rebuild us one day, try to find in fossils some DNA. When you come from the stars riding cosmic waves, you will find us by junk humans left in space. If any of us hear us, give us a hand. The life of this planet is facing its end. Then he pushed the button when it says enter, as security sirens run over the center. As his words penetrated that cosmic soup, the program had computer repeat its loop. He lit up his pipe, smile came to his face. He knew that his words will be heard in space. At this time in his life, he didn't need to panic. He felt presence of the operator who sent sauce from Titanic. He did not care that they'll call him insane, like the operator in Halifax who stopped the train. Four security guards held him to the ground as the air filled air, as the sirens filled air with a deafening sound. They struggled with the program, but could not shut it off, as he was laughing at them in this mountain's loft. He hacked the computer by inserting that disc. He was ready to take his young friend's risk, as they beat him like a fox that was caught in a coop. The computer again repeated its loop. Is there any intelligent life out there? Can anyone hear me? Does anyone care? Thank you.